All right, this tutorial is going to be on the perspective grid. It is kind of frustrating, and I'll show you some of the tricks. Um, sometimes it's easier just to draw it in perspective yourself, which I've got some other videos on that. But if you do want to do things in perspective, there is a perspective grid tool in Illustrator. So that's what we'll talk about today. We'll go into more detail in a minute, but just real briefly, for those of you that just want a refresher, to turn your grid on, Command-Shift-I. To control that grid, view, perspective grid, define grid, or you can choose one of these options. So two point perspective, okay. Okay, to switch the side that you're dealing with, you press one, two, three, or to not deal with one of those sides and to go outside of that, you press four. To adjust these, you just grab them and drag them around. To draw on them, you have one selected. Select a shape tool, draw on it. Select another one, shape tool, draw on it. Those are in perspective. Or you, perspective grid, two point perspective normal. You can also come in and drag objects that are outside. So if you draw something and you want that thing to be in perspective, then you can go here and go shift V, which brings up your perspective tool. Okay, select one of these edges and grab it and drag it in there. You can also resize and it'll keep things in perspective. Okay, we'll go into more detail, but I just wanted to show you really quick. Remember, one, two, three, four to uh, choose what side that you're on. Shift P brings up your perspective tool so that you can make adjustments to these sides. Shift V brings up your perspective selection tool so that you can grab things and keep them in select or in perspective. Before we get too far though, I want to tell you that this will not teach you how to do perspective. To learn how to do perspective, I would recommend doing these two books. Take a look at David Chelsea's book, Perspective for Comic Book Artists, and his sequel to that. You can get a link in the description of this uh, video. So when you're looking to do something in perspective, and you want to use perspective grid, Many of you might have accidentally done this. Um, you just click on the perspective tool. Another way that you can do that is you can go to view, perspective grid, you can go define grid, you can choose one of these options. Let's choose two point perspective normal view. Okay. Now there's a couple things that you will notice about this. You'll notice this little guy up in the corner. Okay. Shortcuts are one for blue side, which vanishes to the left. Okay. 2 for green side, which is or parallel to the ground. 3 for the orange side, which vanishes to the right vanishing point. You can adjust your vanishing points. Okay, You can make them more or less extreme. You can adjust your horizon line. You can adjust each individual plane. So if you grab this little guy here, you can move this plane so you can put him at different perspectives. You can extend that out. Okay, you can do the same with this one. Okay, you can extend your view up or down. That doesn't actually change much, but it does tell you kind of where things are. You can do the same thing down here. Okay, so those are the basics of how to deal with this. Now, if you want to put something onto the perspective grid, then you need to use your perspective selection tool. That's over here. It's underneath the perspective grid tool. From here on out, I'm going to go Shift P or Shift V. It works both on a PC and a Mac, just so you can see what's going on. And you can just come and grab something. So if you have a circle that's already drawn, you can select it, choose the side that you want it to be on. So you can come over here and you can click left, bottom, or right. I'm going to choose right. Then I'm going to drag this on there and notice that it puts it into perspective for me. Okay, it is vanishing to that vanishing point. Okay, now if I wanted to do this, I could make a copy of that thing, bring it over there, switch sides by pressing one, come back over here. Okay, now I have a cube in perspective. Okay, in addition to that, I can come in. Now if you resize it with the black arrow tool, it takes it out of perspective. If you resize it with the perspective selection tool, it continues to keep it in perspective. 
So notice how it's vanishing to the vanishing points as I increase or decrease that. Okay, pretty interesting. You can also pull it this way to make it longer, and it will vanish to that vanishing point. Okay, um, so that is the basics. If I wanted to adjust this, I can adjust this, but it adjusts it independently. Okay, so now if I wanted to make another one of these, okay, it would put it on that plane right there, and I could increase that. Okay, so I can also <coughs> draw things inside of this. Since, so I can come in here and I can press uh, my ellipse tool and I can just draw an ellipse in perspective. If I hold shift then it'll constrain that proportion. So if I don't then I can have it be you know, whatever size I want. If I hold shift and there is a circle in that perspective. If I wanted to do a different side and put this circle on the ground you know, there's a circle in perspective. Throw that to the back. You know, it looks like it's underneath there. Now, if I move it with the black arrow tool, it gets out of perspective. But if I shift V and move it down, then it stays in perspective no matter where I move it. Okay, let's get rid of all of this. We can also come in and I'm going to just reset uh, this. I'm going to go to View, Perspective Grid. Let's do one point perspective. Okay, in one point perspective, I want to be on the blue side here. So I can go down. Okay, and let's give this a color that we can see. Okay, and then I can go four to not be on any plane. Okay, we'll make that a little bit brighter. And you can see how that works. Now, if we change this plane, You know, we can do a building on the other side, or a cube on the other side. Well, I need to go back to the blue side. Okay, four gets us away from that. Okay, I can do another one over here. Let's make it taller. Throw that in the back, change the color. And if we line that up correctly, sometimes it gets a little unruly. I'll just zoom in. I'd really like to do is really like that to match up there. Okay. So there's one point. All right. Let's show you three points. So to get rid, to hide and show, you just press Command Shift I. That'll hide and show. Okay. View perspective grid, three point perspective. We're on three points. Okay. Notice that it vanishes to three points. So you could do. A skyscraper scene. Not working the way I want it to. There we go. Start from the top. From the top will go down. Okay, there's one side. And then let's switch to our orange side here. There's two sides, and we'll come down. Don't want it to be too extreme. There we go. Now we can see those. Okay, now I want to do one on the top. So I'm going to go shift. V, so I can control that, hit the number two, or I can just come over here and click, whichever one you find easiest. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to that tool. I'm going to start here. I'm just going to draw that to those two corners. Okay, and I will make that lighter color. Kind of tell the difference. Okay, let's get rid of the grid. Hey, okay, there is a box in three point perspective, right? Okay. The last thing that you might be interested in doing is setting up a grid precisely. Okay, so if you go to View, Perspective Grid, Define Grid, okay, you can choose one, two, or three, but then you can get very precise. So you can go from points to inches to pixels, whatever you want. You can have a scale, okay. Um, you can choose how many grid lines you want. So if we go to pixels and we want, you know, grid lines every 60 then we'll do that you can change the viewing angle so you could go you could go 5% if you wanted and if I do 5% notice that's an extreme angle there okay now I can still come in um, with my perspective grid tool and I can still adjust that a little bit and I can change that to to be something else um, but this perspective grid define grid you know and let's say 
let's put that at let's put that at 30. See what happens there. You can also change these colors. Okay, so there's 30. Your perspective grid can be useful, but I do want to point this out at the end here. Uh, Illustrator is not a 3D program. Illustrator is a 2D illustration program that does vector graphics. Okay, you're not going to be able to export 3D objects or anything like that from from the perspective grid. So take that as it may. You know, just be careful with it. It can help. You know, when you're needing to get, um, you know, an ellipse in perspective or something like that. But you know, just I, I don't use this tool very much because if I'm doing 3D, I just do it in a 3D program.